Slimehouse TV, myself, Theo Kane. Now, being from the city of Sheffield in Northern England, where I'm from, that's where I was born and raised, quite often when I mention to people that I'm a retro toy collector, they mention the name of a shop to me, especially people of the older generation, and the name of the shop was Redgates. So Redgates was a store that used to exist in my city and it started in the 1800s. It was a huge toy shop. It got decimated in the Sheffield Blitz. In the 1940s, we had the Sheffield Blitz where so much of the city got bombed by the Nazis. And it wasn't until many years later when Sheffield had put itself back together that Redgates reopened and relocated to what was its most famous and well-known location, a place in Sheffield town centre called The Mall. Now this is a store that was open for many, many years. It it was a gigantic toy shop and it didn't close its doors until 1988. Now I was born in 1988 so I never got to experience it, I never got to visit it but the older generation, the one above me and the ones above them, they all went to Redgates when they were kids and they all tell me how amazing it was. It was literally known as like the greatest toy shop in England outside of London. But a few years before it closed, four years to be exact in 1984, somebody must have visited that store or worked there and for some reason brought home one of the catalogues and kept it in such mint condition, maybe they had it on top of a bookshelf and forgot about it at it maybe it ended up in a box buried under a lot of stuff in an attic or something like that but for whatever reason they had one of the original catalogues and my dad over the years has done lots of house clearances and things like that so i don't know how he maintained it but recently when my parents were going through storage they found that very catalog and then now luckily i've got it in my possession now, although it says Redgates on it, this is actually a Toy Master catalogue. And having a quick flick through the first page of the cover, I didn't want to go through all of it because I wanted to share that moment with you lot that watch this show. But it appears that Redgates, towards the end of their days, must have become like an affiliate of Toy Master, had a partnership with them or something like that. I know that before they closed, they were sold to a company called Zodiac Toys, but this was a couple of years before that. So I don't know exactly at what point they became like a member or a partner of Toy Master selling Toy Master toys. But like I said, this place was massive. It had multiple floors. It's literally the go-to place when anybody from the older generation talks about retro toys. They used to go to Redgates and get their stuff. So I've got this mint condition catalog and it's so rare to not find one of these where it's had circles drawn in it where kids were putting stuff on their wish list or they'd cut stuff out and stick it on their school books or stick it on a piece of paper for the things that they wanted for the Christmas and birthday and that sort of thing. But I feel super lucky to be able to have got this in such good condition and also it's from the year 1984. Christmas 1984, bang smack in the middle of what is arguably the greatest era for action figures and dolls and toys and games of all time. Now, like I said, I haven't had a proper look through this. It's been on my desk for some time, but I wanted to share the moment with you lot that watch this show and go through it then so that you got my natural reaction and that we could all look at it at the same time. I know that sounds cheesy, but I like to do that with this channel. I like to share that moment with you lot that watch it and take the time to watch my videos. So it's been on my desk for a while, but one of the things that really stands out to me is this mascot character. So forget all the cool toys that's in the background. Forget the little kids there that are watching him that don't seem that phased by how weird this guy looks. But when you think of the Toy Master mascot, you think of Toby the dog, you think of this guy, you think of that guy there, Toby the dog. Now, recently my girl found this in a shed, and you don't know that as soon as I saw it, I said, Yo, that's coming on with me. But this is from Toy Master when it had a website.co.uk, so this is like years and years and years after Redgates would have existed. But when I was a kid and I used to go to Toy Master, this is the logo that I remember. Like, I certainly don't remember this weird spaceman character, and it's hard to see because the print is pretty dark, but if you look really closely at his face, he's actually got like a sharp nose triangle eyes and a square mouth almost looks like he was carved out of a fucking pumpkin the whole thing looks like some kind of hazmat suit space invader robot kind of sci-fi dude but these kids don't seem phased at all but i must say as much as the toby mascot character is a classic and it's the one that you associate with the shop i can't help but love this guy way more i want an action figure of this dude look how cool he is freaky so if we have a look inside the thing, straight away they've got a bunch of Masters of the Universe. All the classic Masters of the Universe. They've not got them all, but they've got some of the absolute classics. You've got Snake Mountain there, you've got Ram Man, you've got Faker, Jitsu, Man at Arms, Zodak, all the classics. And what's super crazy when you look at this is the prices that some of them were. So if you was going to go and buy a Snake Mountain in 1984 from Red Gates in Sheffield, that would cost you mint in the box... 44.95 
which at the time would have been quite expensive. But if you think now how much you would want to pay for a snake mountain mint in the box, it's 10 times that amount. It's so cool that you can see how much the prices actually were back then. It's a proper time capsule. Let's have a look at Battle Cat. So if you was going to get a Battle Cat from Red Gates 1984, you would be paying 6 dollars 6 dollars for a complete mint in the box Battle Cat. Fucking crazy. Toy Master has over 450 member shops all over the United Kingdom. Like I said, Red Gates must have been a member of Toy Master back in the day. Toy Master shops offer you an incredible selection of the best toys available. You don't know. And this shows all the different places where there was a Toy Master shop. So if you're from England, you look at that map, chances are you're going to see the town where you're from and the Toy Master shop that you used to go to when you was a kid. Let's see what else it's got. Okay, so it's got some classic trains, it's got some home bear, some ski electric, and then some classic games like Bolt and Build, which I've had many times over the years. And then an absolute classic, Crossbows and Catapults, which is a game that's been remade quite a few times over the years. This looks like definitely one of the OG versions. This is the Grand Battle set. And it's an old game where you've got two different opposing armies and you're firing crossbows and catapults at each other. It's fucking awesome. But this is the prize of this page for me personally. The Knight Rider Stunt Set 2000. Super Stunt Set to be exact. Very reminiscent of the Evil Knievel Loop the Loop Stunt Wheel but with a smaller car. So you've got Kit. So fucking awesome. I love me some Knight Rider. I love all the classics. A-Team, Knight Rider, all them. They're, that's my jam. I loved that shit growing up. And then we've got some Action Force. You don't know that I like a bit of Action Force. Not as much as man like Toy Poloi and that, because they go hard with Action Force. But I've got Skeletron, I've got Kraken, I've got some of the top boys. And check this, this is the original. So you've got number five, the Cyber Skull ship. The Robo Skull and Red Wolf. That's going to cost you, back in 1984, $17.95. That's amazing. Considering how much that can go for now in mint condition with all of its parts, that back then you could get it for $17.95. Get me that fucking time machine, man. And action figures, single action force figures would have cost you £1.59 each. On the card, mint. To be honest, action force weren't even worth that much like 10 years ago. Nobody really cared about them. You could get them pretty cheap, but they've definitely had an influx in the last few years. Some classic Meccano there. Some Matchbox toys. They've really got these. Speak of the devil, I was just talking about how much I like Knight Rider and A-Team. They've got some old Matchbox chunky wheeled cars. We've got Kit from Knight Rider. We've got the A-Team van and the A-Team chopper. So cool. And then the playmat that so many kids would have had on their floor growing up. The Sutcliffe Roadway playmat. The playmat where you would roll it out on the floor and it's like a rug with roads and stuff and you'd play on it with your cars. Absolute classic. Speaking of devil again, they've got all the A-Team toys by Rainbow Toys Limited. Check that, the A-Team Command Center. So both the full-size A-Team figures and then the smaller G.I. Joe size ones. And you've got Hannibal, you've got Face, you've got Howling Mad Murdoch, one of my favourites, next to Mr. T, who is obviously the OG. And they're the taller ones that are about 6 inch. And then we've got all the smaller G.I. Joe size ones. And I love this command centre, HQ Island. HQ camp set, complete with figures and lots of accessories for exciting play. You don't know, £8.95 that would have cost you back in 1984. Mental. Let's see how much the command centre would have cost. 48 inches high. $29.95, so cheaper than a Snake Mountain. If you didn't have enough money to get a Snake Mountain, you could probably get an A-Team Command Center. And these I really love. Britain's classic spacemen. I love the little aliens and the robots that come in that set. I've got a lot of them, but I certainly don't have this space station. Look how awesome that is. It looks like a big, cheap, blow-molded piece of plastic with stickers on and decals and then some nice transparent domes that stick on the top of it. Such an awesome piece. And Britons, back in the day, did all kinds of cool stuff. So they did, like, World War II, Medieval Knights, Cowboys, that kind of thing. But then they also did a lot of, like, wholesome play sets like this. They've got the Britons Farm. They also did the Zoo and the Circus. And more Knight Rider and A-Team vehicles here. A-Team and Knight Rider must have been so big back then. Like, everyone was tuning into it. Your nan, your granddad, your mum, your dad, you and your sisters. It's the kind of thing that you all, all sit down and watch together. Because all of you could take something away from it differently. Oh, I love these. A-Team walkie-talkies. I love, like, random merchandise where... They don't actually look like anything from the A-Team. They're just generic walkie-talkies. You could have stuck Masters of the Universe on them. Transformers. Fucking My Little Pony and made them pink. It wouldn't have mattered because they were all a generic shape. But then you put a sticker on them and you put them in an A-Team box and all of a sudden they're a thousand times more awesome. This little wooden tool chest I had as well. My parents bought me that when I was real young. I've got a photo of me somewhere playing with it next to my Ecto-1 Ghostbusters Firehouse. Right at the back here, we've got some Fisher-Price Adventure People Alpha Star ZX playset with an awesome little space explorer dude. What else we got? What else we got? 
loads of classic Lego. Check that. So recently, if you've been watching Slime House, you'll see that I put up a Lego video myself. And it was super intricate and super hard to put together. Like, it took a lot of thinking. A lot of it I would build and then it wouldn't quite click together. And I'd have to go back through it, break it all apart and see where I went wrong. It wasn't an easy thing to build. It wasn't like rocket science, but it was definitely testing on the brain. These old ones were way more simple. I remember having one like this, the little medieval night play set. Check that. Mine was a bit later than this. Mine had a little ghost in it. But it was still very much the same tech, very much the same pieces and very much the same theme. A bunch more really old toys that you would have had when you was really young or like your little brothers and sisters might have had them. All stuff that I didn't have but my sisters had. Maybe I'd have had an activity bear, I can't remember. But this guy, Tubby Turtle, I remember my little sisters taking that in the bath when they used to go in the bath and play with the toys in there, the little turtle. Hold tight, these old play Asterix figures. Not something that I've ever collected, but definitely cool toys if you was into them back in the day. They've got so many different parts and components and accessories. They're really colourful. They're really nice figures. Not one that I've ever collected. I was always way more into like action figures with guns and swords. Figures that look like they would not get a fuck out. But Asterix and Obelix, for the people that collected them, they're really high sought after. I don't know how much they go for anymore, but back in the day, like a good 10 years ago and stuff, 15, 20 years ago, people were really into them. There was a lot of collectors that were like super painful a lot of money for Asterix toys. And then you've got all these classic toys like Cindy and Poochie, Fraggle Rock, Roland Rat, the Glow Worm, all toys that my sisters had. A bunch of pink Barbie toys. Never really been my thing, Barbie, you can probably tell, but I've got a lot of respect for it. These are like quintessential 80s toys. But I do like this. Check this. We've got Great shape, Barbie. With a little help, Barbie can do all the latest aerobic exercises. And you don't know that I'm feeling the outfit that she's got on. She's got the headband with the skin-tight leotard, the leg warmers, proper classic 80s workout gear. I've got a lot of time for that look. I rate it a lot. More quintessential classic 80s toys. You've got My Little Pony there. One for the sisters and the bronies. And then you've got your Care Bears. Strawberry Shortcake. And then it's funny that you've got all these like pastel, colourful, cuddly toys here. And then next to them you've got the Play-Doh Count Creepy Head playset, which is fucking awesome. I don't have one. I would love to have one. I'd love to open it up and do a video on it on Slime House. But it had these transparent heads that you fill with Play-Doh and it squeezes out of the eyes and the nose and the mouth and all holes and orifices in the faces. Fucking Proper gross out shit, I love it. And these I've got so much time for. These are like the old Ben Cooper Halloween plastic masks with the shitty apron costume that goes on the front of them. And they're always broken and torn. It's really hard to get them in nice condition. I've got a dope Rambo one downstairs. But check it, you've got like... These are the guys that we used to aspire to be when we grew up when we were kids. I don't know if you asked a kid now, who would you like to be when you grow up? But when we were kids, these are the people that we wanted to be. He-Man, Darth Vader, Skeletor, fucking Mr. T. Absolute heroes. Those four characters there, like, fully sum up everything that we was about as 80s kids. These are dope. You don't know you was a G in school if you went and took your lunch in one of these. So you've got these, like, themed backpacks that you would take to school. A hold all sling bag kind of thing. So they've got Masters of the Universe there, which I've seen many of my friends that are collecting Masters of the Universe merch and stuff like that. They often have this one in their collection. We've got a My Little Pony one, again, for the sisters and the bronies. And then we've got the one that I would have... This is the one I would have wanted. Mr. T, check that red bag with Mr. T from the A-Team up there. B.A. Baracus, my G. And then on the back page, we've got for what is for most 80s toy collectors, a toy that would be up on the Mount Rushmore of 80s toys. And it's the Kenner Star Wars figures and the vehicles. You've got the Millennium Falcon. You've got the Atta. You've got the damaged X-Wing. You've got what is probably one of the coolest monster toys ever created. The fucking Rancor. Let's see how much a Rancor would have set your back back in 1984 at Redgate's Toy Master. $14.95. Imagine if you could get a mint in the box Rancor for $14.95. I'd be fucking buzzing. Like I said, where the time machine at, man? I need to go. I need to go back to this place. It wounds me that I can't go back. Oh, shit. Guess how much the figures would have cost you back in the day. Kenner Star Wars figures on the card. Last 17, all that. All the Holy Grail toys. They would have cost you back in 1984 at Redgates. £1.59 each. £1.59 each. Imagine. It's fucking mental. So I get a little bit gassed. I know you've got to take into account that like now is 2022 and you've got to take into account inflation and all that kind of thing. And that £1.59 back then was probably a bit different to £1.59 now. But fuck me, man. So I hope you feel that I gave you some good coverage of this book. Obviously, I couldn't show you every single panel and every single page because we'd be here forever. But hopefully if you was 
old enough to have visited that store back in the day and experienced it in person or even if you couldn't if you're like my age and you was just a little bit after that or even if you're a lot younger and you would have never been able to experience a store like this I hope that me just showing you a few panels from this book hopefully brought back some memories or some idea of what it could have been like back then it was also crazy to find this book in such good condition because like I said so often have they got circles drawn in them where kids were like I want this mom I want this or they'd cut them out and stick them on a board like this is my Christmas wish list that I'm sending to Santa but to have a book in this condition to me is absolutely amazing and I feel really privileged to be able to own it and know that I will look after it forever and I will continue to keep it in that mint condition that whoever had this before me did another really cool thing is that I showed this book to my friend Lee who is also a collector of retro stuff and action man and all that kind of thing and he said next time I come around your house I've got something to go with that book that I think you're gonna like and it's this not quite in as good condition as the book but fucking hell it's a paper bag but check it this is one of the original bags from the red gate store complete with the little red gates logo back there how cool is that man like i want to get these framed they need to be in a frame like that presented real nice only thing is then i couldn't be able to just get it out and look at it whenever i wanted to but shit me i think i need to get them in a frame what do you reckon get them in a frame now, whenever I look at stuff like this or like old Argos catalogs, index catalogs and stuff like that, Macy's catalogs and things if you're in America and stuff, they always give me like a weird bittersweet feeling. It's the same feeling I get when I look at pictures of like old 80s shopping malls and stuff like that. And it's the fact that I love this stuff so much, but I'll never be able to go and visit it. I'll never be able to look back. It's like ridiculous to suggest that you could ever do that because like I said, you'd need a fucking time machine. But it always gives me this weird bittersweet feeling because I would love to see and experience that stuff so much. Obviously, we live in 2020. We live in the now and quite often I'm not a big fan of the now. I always wish that I could go back to the 80s and stuff like that. So looking at these things, it always makes me a little bit sad in a way. And looking at the toys and how they were marketed and how they photographed them and knowing that all them toys are gone or been moved on or they're in the hands of collectors or dealers and stuff now that they're no longer on shop shelves and that these kids have grown up and probably got kids of their own and that the person that did this photography is probably dead now or retired. Like what happened to this alien suit? That weird space alien and robot where is that suit now i want to know about that stuff and the fact that it doesn't exist anymore and it's moved on always like leaves me with a weird feeling inside but it's also awesome just to know that this stuff did exist and although i didn't personally get to experience it i could never go to red gates i'm happy that the people that did go to red gates have those memories and i hope that this little video going through the catalog brought some of those memories back if you did enjoy this video today, don't forget to give it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and go back and binge my back catalogue because there's a ton of stuff on there. I'm also on Instagram at Theo underscore Kane underscore Slimehouse. Always feel to drop me a DM if you've got any ideas for videos that you'd like to see me cover in the future. Or if you just want to hit me up, show me your toy collection, tag me in your latest car boot haul, anything like that. I'm very active on my social media, especially on Instagram. I've also got a Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Slimehouse TV and for as little as a dollar a month or more you can become a slime renegade and you can help me make this channel bigger and better than ever i've also got some stuff that i'm going to be announcing in next week's episode of toy talk tuesday i do one of these toy talk episodes every single tuesday where we talk about a different faction of toy collecting or a particular figure or a particular brand or something like that the only thing that limits us on a tuesday is that we talk about toys and this tuesday i've got a bit of an announcement that i'm going to make and going to tell you all about something where you can start getting these episodes way in advanced but more on that on Tuesday in the meantime I'm Theo Kane this is Slimehouse TV I hope you enjoyed my video today going through this old Red Gates catalogue because I certainly enjoyed going through it and I'll catch you in the next video until then I'm gone